Love staying informed? Subscribe now and get unlimited access to local news, weather, and sports for just 99 cents a month for your first three months at inform.news join. Read every story, listen to every podcast, and download the apps that keep you informed and on the go 24 hours a day. So head to inform.news slash join right now to subscribe. What are you waiting for? Get three months of local news for just 99 cents a month at inform.news slash join. start this episode of plain talk with a confession i don't like to gamble i don't uh I, I go to las vegas and uh, i'll be honest with you i sometimes will sit at the penny slots and pretend to gamble and see if they'll uh, bring a free drink or something by i like to watch people gamble i think that's fun i've watched some poker tournaments and stuff i think that's fun i admire the skill that, that some of the people have and some of these um well, I, I just said they have skill and then i'm going to call them skills of, of games of chance but I, I don't know. I, I understand why it's fun. It's just not something I like to do. But lots of people do like to, to gamble, and gambling's been very much on the minds of North Dakotans. We've seen explosive growth in charitable gaming thanks to the proliferation of ETAB machines. It's turned into a multi-billion dollar industry now, and there's some questions about how much bigger should we allow that to get? How much more gaming should we allow? I think a lot of that's happened without a lot of input, frankly, from the taxpayers directly. Is this a road we want to go down? Another facet of this debate is, of course, sports gaming. And by sports gaming, I mean basically uh, probably exactly what you think it means, but betting on football games, betting on baseball games, betting on, I don't know, track and field. Do people bet on track and field? Probably some people out there do. Um, and it's there, – there's there's a bill – I shouldn't call it a bill. It's a resolution – before the legislature. It's already passed the state house. It's now before the state senate. And it doesn't legalize sports betting. But what it does is it puts the question on the ballot and it asks North Dakotans, is this something you want? And I have a feeling there's a lot of North Dakotans out there who want it because frankly, there's a lot of North Dakotans who are already doing it. And this resolution, if it passes the Senate, will go to the ballot and we'll ask voters about it. So here, here to talk to me about it is one of the supporters of the resolution, State Senator Scott Meyer. He is uh, from Grand Forks. Scott, how you doing? I'm doing well, Rob. Thanks for having me. I should mention uh, that you're a Republican, like you too, but but the fact that you're serving in the state Senate and there's just four Democrats. Odds are any senator, state senator I'm talking about is a Republican. But Scott is also a Republican, I should I should point out. Yes, I am. And, and yeah, the, the four uh, Democrats are from Fargo. Um, so, yeah, if you're outside <laughs> of Fargo, yeah, you, you well, have an idea. Um, That's for sure. But uh, thank you again for having me again. This is, this is uh, something that barely failed in the Senate last session and it's back again. And I think it's going to continue to come back. And I, I don't know if, the, if we can't get it through as a legislature, will it go to the people putting it on as a petition? Well, I don't know. Um, but it is, it is something like you said, it's, it's been talked about a lot. In fact, when I think about bills and ideas and policy that people reach out to me on the most, it's, it's a lot of times sports betting. Maybe it's the company I keep. I don't know. But it is uh, it is something that comes up a lot because there's around 150,000 people already participating, right? So it's, it's, it's happening. It's not like we're stopping it from happening. So I think it's an important discussion for us as a state and, and bring it to the vote of the people and let them make the decision. That, that, that number you just cited, you just say 150,000 people are already doing it? Yeah. I mean, and I'm probably bumping that up a little bit. There was an Oxford study that – uh, testimony from last session said there were over 130,000. I, I mean, it's becoming more and more mainstream every day. You see tickers on Sports Center now that give the over under or what the line is on a game, and it, it's it's everywhere. It, uh, you didn't see this 10 years ago. Uh, you could probably even say five years ago, five years before the 2018 Supreme Court decision. But it is it is right there in your face all the time. And uh, I would have to imagine that it's probably bumped up. That's that's just me speculating though of course but it was 130,000 in an Oxford study from a couple years back I I mean that number surprises me but again maybe I maybe I don't keep the right company of people who who enjoy this particular pastime although I will say I've noticed as a baseball fan 
Um, I remember when Pete Rose was banned from the game over gambling, and now DraftKings is sponsoring uh, Major League Baseball broadcasts, and their logo is out on the field and everything. So it's a different world we're living in, to be sure. So, so what does a resolution ask? I mean, if the voters say yes to this resolution, Scott, and, and assuming, because obviously it's got to get through the state Senate, so it goes to the vote of the people. If this resolution passes, what happens? Well, we kept it, or I'll say this, Representative Steeman kept it pretty clean. He didn't have any companion bills that said, hey, if this does pass, we already have language in the, in the century code to allow it. So he's, he's kind of going a, a much more conservative approach, letting the people make that call. And then next session, it would take the legislature to put the actual policy in place and, and how we want to proceed with, you know, taxation. How do you want to do with, uh, you know, the consumer protection, revenue sharing, all those types of things, addiction counseling. But really, he's just going, we got to take this, although small step, it's a giant step. It, it needs to happen before any of this can go forward. So I, I, I like this approach. Let it take it to the people and let them vote on it because we have to amend the Constitution to do this and and come back in two years and, and make it work. So it's it's uh, it's pretty small and minimal because there is no uh, companion language. So so this resolution and, and for, for people who we're, we're talking about HCR three zero zero two, if you want to go look it up um, and essentially if it, if it passes, it amends the state constitution and I'm, I'm reading it now. I have the I have it in front of me. It says, essentially, you know, the legislative assembly may authorize sports betting on professional sports to be conducted in the state and licensed and regulated by the state. So essentially what this does is this amends the state constitution and says legalizing sports betting on professional sports is something the legislature could do. And then it comes back to the legislature and you guys would take that mandate from the people saying, listen, they want this. They're saying we could do this. Now we have to pass enabling legislation, as you pointed out, to regulate it and tax it and do all that stuff. A hundred percent. It's, it's uh, kind of like what happened with the Powerball. I, I don't remember how many years ago that passed, but it took the, the vote of the people. Uh, and, and right. They, they put it in place, uh, pass it, you know, if anybody had concerns that the legislature wouldn't move it forward, I mean, I guess technically you could say that, but when when the people put it in place and voted in, you're, you're kind of, uh, you, you have to do it, right? So uh, you have to put something there. So it, it would, it would uh, we'd put some enabling language in, in the 2025 session. So let me, I noticed it's limited just to professional sports. Why, why that limitation? You know, I, I guess I'm not the uh, the one to answer that question. Uh, I know there has been some concerns from, you know, uh, the, the chancellor about uh, our, our student refer, referring to North Dakota Uni- been some you're, that, you're, you're referring to uh, North Dakota University. You're referring to North Dakota University System Chancellor Mark Hagerot, and I know he's been he's yeah. an opponent. He's an opponent of of sport of legalizing sports gaming in North Dakota. Correct, correct, and and it's part of those things. Like, could it compromise our student athletes? I, I understand where he's coming from. However, my, my question would be, uh, what's stopping our student athletes from, you know, NDSU football, UND hockey or basketball or whatever? Uh, there's already betting lines on those, on those games. That's already happening. So that, that doesn't stop if this passes or fails, right? So if that is a concern, which I'm fine with that being a concern, it should be, uh, why, you know, what's stopping that now, right? Because um, again, maybe, and I'd even make the case that maybe they are more vulnerable because we don't have it around here, right? So we could have some funding mechanisms in place to educate our student athletes about point shaving and what it, the impacts and things like that. So uh, to, to answer why it's just professional, I, I guess uh, that might be a better question for Representative Stephen, Stephen who authored this uh, legislation. I, we could probably guess in that it's, it's if, there's, if there's serious opposition. It's, it's, I think it's probably an attempt to placate some of the opposition to, to going down this road saying, okay, well, if there's right. hostility to legalizing it for collegiate or I suppose even high school athletics, uh, then, you know, we'll, we'll limit it to professional sports. But as you say, it's already happening with these others. Um, so I don't know. I mean, it's, it's kind of a weird world. And I, I think that that really speaks to part of the problem here is the market's gotten out in front of the, the government. Um, as it often does. And, and a lot of times that that's a good thing, but I think if we're talking about something like 
like gaming, which I, I think we know, Scott, has some deleterious effects on society, much like with alcohol, much like with, with anything. Some people overindulge. Some people don't behave responsibly. And I think part of the problem is with, with something like gaming, when it gets ahead of where we are as, as a state government, then we're not prepared to deal with those deleterious impacts in perhaps the best way we could, which I think you mentioned. Right. I mean, you were, you've been talking about things like consumer protection, for instance, to make sure that, you know, if, if you're gaming with a, with a, with somebody who's taking your bets, that they're going to treat you fairly, that they're going to follow through on what was promised. That's part of what you're talking about here. Correct. And, and think about it. A lot of these, uh, the sites that folks use, to bet on sports right now are offshore. They're offshore betting accounts. So we have no consumer protection. We have no uh, oversight. And and what I kind of think about, you know, what really pops out to me is just what happened recently with FTX and how they they had offshores in in the Bahamas. And basically no one that lost money had any any ways to recoup or, or do anything about it, right? So that's, that's kind of why I look at this and say this is important that we actually provide that protection to our consumers. Uh, in fact, uh, back uh, in January, I uh, through through the governor's office, he has a policy advisor named John Wright, and reached out and said, Scott, we should create a task force should sports betting pass. And this task force would look at things like you said, protecting North Dakota's interests, consumer protection, taxation, revenue sharing, the impacts of addiction, what the effect on our youth. And what are the best practices going forward? How do we, re- how do we uh, work with the tribes? And, and those are questions that we need to answer. Um, but again, what I, I think the, the, the biggest thing we need to do to address with sports betting is, again, oversight and consumer protection for our citizens because they're already doing it. That's, it's already happening. So what can we do to have a little bit more um, protection for them? Well, the, the, the part where you're saying it, it's already happening, maybe maybe that's the answer to this this question. But what about the people who are saying uh, th- there's probably some people that are inhibited by the fact that sports betting at the very least in North Dakota exists in a legal gray area. Um, I mean, technically, it's not legal. But as you said, it's happening. And because it's happening offshore, I, I, I don't know, that becomes difficult. So what happens if, if the, how would you respond to people who are saying, listen, if, if we legalize this, and that's essentially what this, even though this resolution says the legislature may authorize sports betting, if this resolution passes on the ballot, the legislature is going to authorize sports betting. So what about the people who say, well, that's going to open up a door and we're going to have, you know, gambling addicts and we're going to, it's going to create problems. I know the chancellor, you know, one of the things he's concerned about are, you know, young college students sitting in their dorms you know, gambling themselves into serious financial problems. How do you respond to those concerns? Well, again, that's why I think we need to have like a task force created to address those concerns because, again, we, we do have – it's not like gambling is new to North Dakota. It's, it's, it's here. We have other means of addressing addiction with uh, whether it's electronic pull tabs, whether it's, you know, uh, Powerball, whatever, or lottery tickets, those types of things. So this is nothing new as far as addressing addiction. Maybe they'd say, well, we're giving, giving them another, another option. But again, like we'd already just, uh, we've probably been <laughs> hitting this on the head quite a few times. It, it's already happening. And, and just because it's already happening, some say, well, that's not a reason to, to legalize it. Well, if we're not going, going to enforce it and, 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 you know, go after people, which I think would be absolutely crazy anyway. Um, well, then let's do what's right and just, again, legalize it and offer the support that's necessary for this industry. Uh, what have you heard from the tribes on this? I, I can't imagine they're very happy with this. And I, I think from their perspective, yeah, obviously the tribes have had, I don't, I don't know that monopoly is the right word, but they've kind of had a, a lock on this on ga- gaming in North Dakota for a long time, which is to say it was illegal in most parts of the state, except when you came to their reservation. So, you know, people who wanted the game had to travel to their reservations. They had to book a hotel room, maybe. Maybe they would get tickets for a concert. The tribes have been making a lot of money at this. Now, obviously, the, the more we, we open up the door to off-reservation gaming in North Dakota. So, you know, certainly the tribes say that they've been hit hard by the rise of ETAB machines because now you're seeing billions of dollars in gaming that are taking place you know, off the reservation in, in just, you know, bars and restaurants in across the state of North Dakota. If we open up sports gaming as well, that, that that's another reason people have 
to not need to travel to their local Native American community and and stay at a casino there. So what have you heard from the tribes on this? They have to be feeling like like they don't like this very much. Well, Rob, so uh, the tribes currently can allow it in person on their on their uh, site, right? So you're correct there. Uh, I looked at the testimony. I never saw anything in opposition. Now, that could obviously change after crossover. And I think it's just as important, though. They need We want them to be a part of this discussion. They deserve to be at the table, talk about this. How could it affect them? Could they also be the ones that maybe help uh, service the online gaming aspect? I don't know. I, I think it's important that we're all sitting down, though, and, and – working through this together should this pass and they like i said very much deserve to be at the table with this discussion i i'm generally in favor of letting people do what they want to do um if people want a game it doesn't matter how i feel about it one way or another uh we should figure out how to allow them to do that and you know make sure that they're protected and we're doing it responsibly etc cetera, etc cetera. so i i don't know I've, I've never spent a lot of time being all that concerned our our friends in the tribes they're They have sovereign government and sovereign areas and they can do what they want. But the state of North Dakota is also sovereign. And what we do is is our business and their business, too. They're North Dakotans as well. But, you know, I I think that becomes a a difficult thing sometimes for them. But I I don't know how much of it. I guess personally, I don't know how much of a concern that is for me in that I don't I don't think the North Dakota I don't think it's. It's the job of the North Dakota legislature to protect tribal gaming interests. I, I guess maybe that's the way to put it. Maybe that's too direct. I don't know. But um, I, that's kind of how I feel about it. Well, I mean, you're right. Earlier you mentioned that they did have a significant impact because of the electronic toll tabs. That uh, can't deny that. So I, I just think it's important that we all all work on this one together and, and don't leave yeah. someone out of the discussion and, and kind of go from there. Um, but again, yeah, for me, I... I I've made one sports bet in my entire life. So I, I don't see this as something I'm going to be running around uh, betting a ton, but it's, I, I do pay attention to the lines at, at the same point. So, so anyway, it's interesting. Now, now, maybe this is putting the cart before the horse, but because again, all this resolution does is it asks North Dakotans to give a thumb up, thumbs up or a thumbs down to whether the legislature can authorize sports gaming. But when we, if, if they do say yes to this, and we do get to a point where the legislature is tasked with authorizing sports gaming. As, as somebody who's who's obviously been central to this debate, and, and understanding that that as that debate takes place, you know Scott Myers is not going to dictate how everything's going to go. But in your mind, as a proponent of this, how does sports gaming work in North Dakota? When when the legislature comes time to authorize this, what does that look like to you? I think it's kind of a hybrid approach is what I'd like to see. Um, I, I, if a bar or restaurant that maybe has some, uh, you know, blackjack tables, things like that, and they wanted to also offer, you know, betting, I, I think of a place almost like in my district, like Joe Black's is a sports bar. A lot of Vikings fans go there, watch it, whatever. Uh, could you, could you have something, a kiosk in there, walk up, make a bet. Okay. Um, obviously the, the, the majority of folks would be using an online option. They would bet from their phone. Uh, that's how I see it uh, going forward. Um, and and I'm sure others have different feelings on this, at, but uh, I think you would have, like I said, you'd have uh, the, the, the tribes, you'd have the state. I think you'd have the business community as far as hospitality associations. Do they want this in there? How does that work? Um, but I, I, I see it as a hybrid. But the big, the big aspect, the big push that most folks want that I talk to, is they want to have that that online in their hand option. Well, I think that's, I mean, certainly from my perception, that seems to be how, how most people are doing it. I mean, how does that work, Scott? I mean, I, I realize neither of us, uh, maybe we're poor people to talk about this because neither of us are spending a lot of time sports gaming, but uh, how do you, I mean, are, are North Dakotans able to do that now if they're sitting watching the NFL on a Sunday, on a Sunday, uh, Sunday afternoon? Can they pull up their phone and, and place a bet now as a North Dakotan? Yeah, yeah, they can. There's there's some of those, like I said, offshore accounts where they can do it that way. But again, they are at risk that if something did go wrong, how could they recoup their money? How could they get what they need back, right? And and that's that's the aspect right there. Um, so we would do something where, again, we, we would set up um, sports betting online through the state of North Dakota, whatever. And would we have people like DraftKings or whatever handle it? That's to be determined. But uh, that would be ideally how it would be run something along those lines you could just go on your phone 
or again, if you could stop at a, at a restaurant or a bar that has some uh, gaming capabilities, uh, the charities, whatever. Um, I, I think that's the ideal point is just, again, allowing the state to have, have that uh, oversight. One thing that I, I think would be good too is, is even though it's already happening, we could capture some of that revenue and we could use it to try to offset, again, some of the impacts on society from people who, who do develop, say, a gambling addiction. Um, some I've, I've heard people claim, and I guess I haven't looked in it, so I don't have an opinion myself, but some people claim that we aren't sufficiently funding our gambling addiction efforts and we could do more, you know, particularly given – you know, with, with legalized e-tabs and, 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 you know, charitable gaming getting so much larger than it has been in the past, that we should be funding gaming addiction services through the state more. How do you feel about that, Scott? Yeah, I, I think so. I think, well, obviously this will be taxed, and the funds from this taxation could be used for those things. And and, and I think it is important to provide that because this is this is a, a real – this is a real uh, – issue an addiction to gambling so um i'd be totally in support of making sure we had adequate funding for addiction counseling well scott i appreciate you coming on and discussing this with me and, and stepping out of committee i i dragged scott out of a committee to uh, do no I, i'm kidding i didn't do that uh but i appreciate you coming on and talking to me about it and uh, it's going to be an interesting debate and and honestly i i gotta say i i support the resolution i i think it's a good thing to put it in front of voters. I hope voters say yes, because again, this is something that's happening and, and then put the ball back in the legislature's court so that we can, again, put in place some protections, get some tax revenue from it, use that revenue to offset some of the impacts that gaming has on society. Uh, I think it's a good thing. I think it's time. And I think the biggest argument for it is, as we've said repeatedly, this is already happening. Absolutely. And I would say at the end here, Rob, I'd, I'd like to make a bet with you about who makes who represents the American League in the World Series, if it's the Yankees or the Twins. But we all know that the Yankees beat the Twins 90 percent of the time. So I, knowing how sports betting works and how people analyze a little bit, I'm going to say that's a bad bet. And I'm not going to take you on that one. But I could see you and Congressman Armstrong having a Yankees Mets World Yankees Series. Yankees Mets. Yeah, that could be interesting. Uh, maybe. I mean, a Yankees Mets World Series would be exciting, but. They are the Mets. Although my Yankees, I the the way the Astros have been uh, cleaning our clocks every year, as frustrating as that's been, I don't know. I don't know how. This, see, this is why I don't bet on sports. I just want to watch the game. I get so anxious. Like even if I have a little bit of money, I just want to. I just want to enjoy the games. But I'm not judging. If you enjoy, if you enjoy putting some money on it, I'm not judging you. But I just, I don't know. I, I'm, I'm, I'm not a gambler. Remember, you're not getting any sympathy from me as I am a Twins fan. That is so true. That just, is true. Remember yeah. this. Yeah, I w actually, I, I was just texting Congressman Armstrong the other day. I was looking at the lifetime uh, win-loss record for, for uh, in baseball, like for going back the last hundred years, which is just about the only sport where you can do that. And uh, the Yankees have a 94-win uh, record over the last, 94-win per season pace. Over the last 100 years, number one in baseball, number two is the Dodgers, uh, the Mets, and the uh, and the Twins come down uh, a lot further down. Although you will be happy to know that the Twins have a better 100 year win loss record than the Mets do, Scott. So, uh, although that's oh, only well, that, that's only if we include the Washington National years. So. Uh, but yeah, that's there. Some, anyway, some great years. Some enough, great years. <laughs> enough, enough sports nerdery. We're going to end this interview right now, Scott. Thank you for your time. Thanks, Rob. Did you know Forum Communications Company has a robust podcast library? At inforum.com forward slash podcast, we have everything from politics, sports, true crime, outdoor adventure, and more. Visit inforum.com forward slash podcast and explore them all today.